Okay, thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. We are here in the post-show chat room where we take your questions. Uh, I'm sure you have. Oh my gosh, this is this chat room's crazy. I uh, this is gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get. I, I hope that it's like 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes of your time here. Um, let's see. U.S. Broadcast is here. Tom Sinclair is here. Mike Lotta is here. P. Engine, PI Engineering is here. Philip Kloss. Piston Media Group, Joe Husson, Daniel Wright. I haven't got to the questions yet. They're saying Mike Lott is saying you're a true tech because you drink soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ulysser, who always asks a bunch of questions, is vMix PC only? I can answer that one. Yes. Um, VoiceOver Conference Atlanta is asking, does anyone know where I can find discounts toward the PTZ Optics 20X camera? <laughs> Call Tom Sinclair. <laughs> um... Okay, Philip Kloss, has anybody successfully tried blocking the Windows updates on a Windows 10 home PC successfully? <laughs> Tutorial provided by streaming in its Facebook group. I'm guessing you guys can check that out there. My mic is starting to clip a little bit. Darn it. I got the mic working, but it's probably too hot over there. Uh, I'll try to talk softer. Um, I've been running vMix on laptops using real cameras, not play toys, on HDMI for several years now to no avail. Has any work been done to streamline the software so it could work properly, says the media ecologist. Ecologist. Need to know specifically what challenges they're running into. Are they, have they got a capture card? What's, what's their setup? Are they just looking for the right hardware? Because um, vMix works with everything. Any way you want to bring your cameras in, both the high-end professional cards and USB solutions and even RTSP streams. So I guess we know well, what camera do they have? What equipment do they have now? Do they need to get some more professional capture equipment to bring those cameras in? Um, and about Windows service, Windows Update, you can just have a Windows Update on all Windows 10 versions. All you have to do is go into Services. You can search for Services in the Start menu and find the Windows Update service in that list and set it to disabled. And that'll stop all updates until you uh, enable it or set it back to manual. Um, so I thought about making a, a utility that just has a toggle switch to do that um, if users don't want the updates to update. But now in the latest Windows 10, you can, you can specify the day of the week you want the updates to occur. So if you're doing a Friday show, you can make sure Friday is unticked. It'll never update on Fridays. Um, so there's all those other options built in as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to talk softer. I guess my mic was too hot. I finally got rid of my Scarlet 2i2 2 because 2 it was dropping on me all the time. And now I use what you guys use, the Behringer UC402 or 202 or whatever it is. And it seems to be working good. Um, US Broadcast is saying that they continue to provide solutions which will be very similar to the existing U and go after. December 31st. Um, Piston Media Group said they af they've offered premium support to anyone who needs help with vMix. Additionally, we will be working closely with US Broadcast to continue to provide vMix hardware solutions. Um, yes. So, yeah, that's what I sort of meant about the resellers of providing solutions. They'll, they can provide custom solutions. They'll have off-the-shelf solutions. There's a whole lot of op options out there. Um, so best thing is to do is just to, to, if you want a solution for streaming, contact our resellers and they'll have an option that suits you. Me media ecologist, we're going to have to get some more information from him because he's saying that, <laughs> I'm just going to read all of these, Martin. Uh, he's saying vMix is lousy and keeping their registered user base informed. I don't know if I agree with that or not, but it says it was a nice idea and I bought it but they do not stay up with their users. They also label things outside of decades of professional video production. I'm just going to keep reading these so we can just kind of... Custom labeling would solve this. You, I thought you, add, you added that in vMix 17, didn't you? Or at least for the I'm tab. not sure. Um. <laughs> Tom's saying I disagree. They play close attention in the forums. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just skip a couple of these. We have, we have so many. We have a blog. We have, any, we have blog. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have our forums. Anytime we update something or release something, all of those platforms have news. So there's so many ways to keep up to date. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure um, what that is all about. Um, 
they're all Tom's also mentioning that maybe he should check out the VMix Fun Time show. Um, and uh, Tom Willis is saying this is a show that matches or exceeds broadcast quality. These guys are just chatting. Um, okay. Um, as you talk about during IBC, will there be an option to use more external outputs or an option to customize the multi view better in VMix 18 or 19? So, where was that question? Philip um. Kloss. He said, as you talked about, as you talked during IBC, will there be an option to use more external outputs or option to customize the multi viewer better? Um, so what you can do is you can assign to the outputs in vMix any input. So you can then just use the input multi view feature and create your own layout and send that to whatever output you want. So that's a way to create a custom layout. Um, but the multi views are sort of fixed um, in a three different configurations um, because they have things like audio meters and labels built into them. So you have to structure them um, a little bit more. Um, but there is two outputs available, um, four outputs if you count the full screen and the, the external outputs. Um, so it's there's usually ways for every, even the most advanced productions to take advantage of all of those outputs um, and do what you need to do in your production. Um, Okay, um, Verdan Art says hi from Croatia and the Vayu Cam team. I, I do you know? Have you ever heard of the VU Cam team? I haven't. Okay, I think they have some type of like wireless camera for NDI or so. I'm not sure, but I think um, Joe Huston is asking, what is the future roadmap for enhancements to instant replay? Well, in VMix 18, we did a whole bunch of uh, enhancements to it. So you can get the latest preview release of that um, on our forums. So I'd say people check that out and, and, and see, see what you think. Um, but that's what our current roadmap is. We've just finished all of those updates. So I would suggest users uh, test that out. Um, Jim Davis is here. Uh, Jim is with DVS Direct. I'm pretty sure you've met him before. He's a, a big industry guy. Um, he's saying, if you need a more traditional switcher layout, understanding that vMix UI, however, there is a lot of power in this software. Stream dudes are here, and they're asking, what is the best way to do more than two 4K cameras? Uh, we've been testing three, um, but we don't have a recommended system for that. So we, once we work out the best way to do that, 4K just it quadruples every thing in the system. So you really have to expand it really a lot to, to do more than two cameras of 4K reliably. So once we work out what systems are needed for that, we'll add it to our reference specifications. Um, you know, the worst case scenario is that we'll wait until the next uh, X299 Intel platform, probably around mid next year. Um, that has a lot of really, it expands mm -hmm. number of lanes and all sorts of fun stuff to add even more capture cards than before. Um, so it'd be interesting seeing what that is, but I'm also interested in seeing with current technology, what you can do with 4k as people may know, we did a live show last month where we had three, but we were using two PCs to do that because you couldn't record stream and use three cameras in 4k all on the one computer, <laughs> at least not yet. Um, that said, you can use 4K in a HD production workflow. Um, that's great for sports. One 4K camera across the entire field and just cut out HD angles from that in vMix. Um, so there's ways, if you're going to only be streaming in HD anyway, you may be able to use more than two cameras um, or you know, many cameras from a single 4K camera. Yeah, 4K became a big uh, topic when we were talking to Andrew Cross because the TriCasters don't support 4K today. And Andrew kind of mentioned that he thought it, it might be a standard that could kind of get quickly passed by something else. Um, but it does seem like it's something that's definitely here now. And who knows how realistic it really is. But um, Dub NWBC Live is saying vMix has been great for us and his clients. He's been going on three years now and had nothing but great things. 
Um, John Basil saying hi. I'm a little late. Um, Rick Ard Peterson. He's saying he has an AMD and an NVIDIA, and the NVIDIA 1070 is working great. Um, Stream Dudes is also going to continue to sell the vMix hardware. Um, PI Engineering is asking me to show a little bit more of the X keys. This is super cool, guys. I don't know if you guys can see this, but basically I've got, for the agenda topics, those are my nine agenda topics, which I used to have to go all around the world to find where those were. This is my lightning round right here in L. <laughs> this, this button makes uh, Martin large, full screen. And um, I'll just do that, I guess, to show you it working. Boop. But um, it's been amazing. This thing, I, for the price and what it does, it's just so, so cool. Um, T-bar works. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. Um, but I will get back to the chat room. Um, Piston Media Group says, also sponsors a vMix user group and a LinkedIn group. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm like like 10 minutes late in this chat room because I'm getting stuff that <laughs> it seems like they would have asked a long time ago. Does vMix and PTZ Optics invest in startup ideas in the live streaming branch? It's probably not a bad idea because um, I guess they're working on a live streaming wearable camera that you can easily attach to glasses and stream while you're hands free. Oh, that's what the VU camera thing is. Okay, I'm going to look into that. Maybe I'll work with Martin on it. Um... Okay, what else do we got here? Stop swiveling in your chair, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> X99, uh, would an octo-core do the trick? I'm guessing John's asking about f two cameras in 4K. Um, so uh, the octo-core won't, as far as I know. The bottleneck is some kind of... Uh, issue with the x99 chipset itself where it's it's not allowing data to be moved around as fast as it should you know it's got so many lanes it's got so much bandwidth it should be sending all that 4k along to the various parts of the computer really really fast and it's getting stuck and i don't know if it's an nvidia driver issue or something like that so i have to really dig down and investigate but just getting a faster processor won't help because the processors six cores are already really fast but the data isn't getting through them fast enough um, and that's the problem at the moment um, so when we did 4k we did three cameras into a z170 system four core processor four gigahertz and then we had that ndi to another one that that was recording and streaming it. And we were able to do all of that. Um, but yeah, so I know a lot of people asked on um, streaming meeting, streaming idiots as well about the X99. I gave them, a, uh, there's a bit of a more in depth answer there on that show if you want to check that out. Uh, the short of it all is still looking into it. But as soon as I know a solution, I'll let everybody know. It'll be posted on all of our blogs, because we want everybody to be able to, to access the power of the X99. It's not a vMix issue, by the way. We've had reports on the forums about audio software, Pro Tools and the like, having audio crackling issues with X99 as well. So it's an mm -hmm. issue that a lot of companies in the industry are investigating. So I hope we get a... Uh, by the way, as well, it's worth pointing out, there are people out there that have X99 systems that are working flawlessly. And that's tricky. <laughs> that's a challenge. Yeah. Why are they working fine? And we are running into problems and other customers are running into problems. So if you have an X99, it's working fine. Don't throw it out the window. Keep it. It's working fine for you guys. We're just hoping to find a solution for everybody else. So for, and you brought up a good question. And we only got a couple minutes left, but I, I did kind of want to ask you. So how many of your customers or how often, can you just tell us a little bit about like using multiple computers now? Like, cause that's kind of like an interesting thing because vMix is built for computers. It's not a dedicated, a pr proprietary piece of hardware. So, and I saw Tom doing this and I think other people are doing this. Are people actually using multiple computers to kind of separate tasks and make things more kind of seamless? Yeah, they are. Um, examples would be including using a second computer for replay, a primary computer for the switching, 
um, using a secondary laptop for PowerPoint presentations. Particularly in churches, you'll have a separate laptop that's got the lyrics and the words, and then they'll use a primary system uh, for the actual switching onto the big screens. Um, so there's a lot of applications out there that are using two. Um, there's even people using three or four where they are dedicating a laptop to a caller on Skype. Um, but I guess with, you know, with Zoom, you can do that all in the one software. So there's advantages of using Zoom over Skype. Um, but yeah, people are using separate systems with Skype. They're using separate computers without realizing they are computers when they're using Skype appliances. You know, all those Skype TX appliances, both by New Tech and other companies are PCs and they're using, in, and most of them support NDI. So without realizing it, people are already using multiple computer workflows um, with vMix and with other systems as well. And vMix is also used as a secondary system for other NDI systems. They've got a TriCaster and they're happy with that. They know how that works. They really like the features of vMix. We have a lot of customers that do this. They'll install vMix on the laptop and take advantage of say, the web browser feature or things like that, and then send that to the switcher that they currently use. So just so many different. And I'm, so, I'm sure we'll hear in the future, NDI has been around now for, what is it? It's, it's coming up on six months. So if we're seeing all of this stuff happening already in six months of NDI, just imagine what's going to happen a year from now. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's pretty incredible. So it's not like people are, there's just so many different ways. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. It looks like uh, the media, media oncologist, some, something that he said was blocked by the channel blacklist. Um, I did create, and I, anyone who live streams on YouTube, you can have like a dirty words list and you can like download it from the internet. Cause I didn't, I can't even come up with these words. So I just downloaded a giant package of words and said, YouTube, if anyone says these words, put them in the blacklist. <laughs> It looks like for the first time, media oncologist, I'm not sure what you said, but it was blocked <laughs> by the blacklist. Um, is there any way to view more than four inputs on the screen? Um, yes. Yes, for sure. Uh, just set up a, a blank input, set up a multi-view and add them all in. You can, you can even do an input within an input. So you can have up to, I believe, 25 on screen the same time here's a good question i was actually jan jan burnett is asking this one and i actually had the same question is it possible to use the t-bar with the merge trans um like with it with something other than fade yes you can uh the very first transition button at the top of vmix whatever you assign that to is what the t-bar will use if you set it up ah. as a short uh, so if you set that top one to merge and you've set your T-bar to set fader, um, it should do a merge. But I Is believe that merging? So, no. Um, because you're using a virtual set, it's a little bit different. Oh, but if you okay, had, let's try something if else. If you had the double shot to the full screen, that'll, that'll merge. Okay, let's do that. So no, from the, yeah, the double shot, not the virtual set. Oh, I'm still on the virtual set. Okay, sorry. It's, the T-bar is confusing me. Yes. Okay, let me go back. All right, here we go. Woo! Oh, that's so Dang. cool! <laughs> this is what I love about VMix. It's like, it's, it's, it's like I was able to do that in like five seconds. And of course, I had this already ready, but that is so cool. Let's all play with VMix. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Cool. Okay, I'm keeping you longer than I wanted to. Let me just finish up the last questions here. Um, you can do it, Jan, and we just did it. Um, are we, we are looking forward to adding NDI as a feature so that we can easily manage the Vayu camera as an event. Oh, wow, cool. Um, just finished shoot, Media Oncologist just finished shooting a 10 camera video series and he wish he could have done it on vMix. The problem is, is that the mic cable <laughs> still is telling me to stop swiveling in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to swivel in my chair if I want to. Um, with only USB, there isn't a way to bring multiple cameras in composite or SDI into a vMix laptop. Well, actually, if you saw the video in the beginning, there is. That's what Martin was using here. Well, that's Thunderbolt, so yeah. Oh, oh um, okay, you're right. So I asked AJ about that. USB is getting faster and faster, you know, USB 3.1. Um, 
So they said, yeah, it's possible that they could have a multi-camera input box for the faster USBs sometime in the future. Although you could use the AJU tap, um, as John um, is pointing out in the chat room. Um, maybe, I think they've tested two on a laptop, working well. I think they even tested up to three. Um, the great thing about the UTAP is you can select in vMix a lower resolution. Lower resolution equals less bandwidth. Therefore, mm. if you had HD cameras all plugged in, but you only wanted you wanted four cameras, you could probably set them all to SD and it would automatically scale all of them down. Um, so yeah, uh, the UTAP is really great. There are other USB ones by Magewell and uh, Who's the other manufacturer that makes them? I think it's mainly just Magewell and AJ, the big major ones. Epiphone have them as well. So, but Thunderbolt's becoming much more common on laptops. So maybe the problem will solve itself. Uh, the brand new MacBook Pro, for example, has four USB 3.1 slash Thunderbolt ports on it. Three or four of them. Really? So, so you could go crazy and see if you can do eight cameras with that or something with two. AJI 4Ks or or whatever. So no, I I do agree. I should stop swiveling in my chair. Um, I'm supposed to have Tom told me this. I'm supposed to have like a hard stool, but I don't know. I have I have like no fat on my butt, so it doesn't it doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny what you know comes up in the chat room. Um, it looks like Media and Colleges is trying to configure ten cameras in 4K. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> I don't think we have to answer that one. I don't. I don't know. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> um, yeah, just the math of bandwidth. It doesn't add up, even with the fastest possible things out there. Um, you know, if somebody really wants a multi-camera four K system, they could use a physical hardware Atom four K, just for all of their cameras. Send the output of that into a vMix production, but you just have to switch it separately. But at least that's a way to get multiple 4K cameras in. <laughs> Too much uh, information. <laughs> Too much information <laughs> about the stool. I'm, I apologize. I'm not going to... I hope no one asked me that question. I'm going to get the stool and just put a cushion on it. And call it a day. Um, last... Qu I have a question for you that's not even in the chat room, and then hopefully we'll call it a day unless there's something really interesting that comes up. But the 4K thing is really interesting to me. And um, I was wondering if you had a 4K camera... And then you like zoomed into it two and a half times or whatever it is. Um, could you could you use the merge function technically in a 1080p production and then have like digital zoom basically happening without any artifacting? Yeah. So you could you could basically using the merge feature you could duplicate or create virtual input copies of that 4K and then position them all, zoom them in, zoom them out, and then merge between them. Um, mm -hmm. And that way you've got virtual camera set up using 4k i will say though you'll need to this is the the thing about if everybody remembers decades ago when hd cameras were coming onto the scene and people zoomed in standard definition quadrants of the hd signal and it didn't look as good as a good quality standard definition camera it's the same idea now with early adopter 4k cameras the quality zoomed in pixel for pixel isn't as good as good HD cameras are. Um, so that's the thing. It's it's um, the pixels in the sensors are smaller. They're not getting in as much light. So the quality isn't as good as a good quality HD camera when you're comparing a zoomed in HD shot versus a, a proper HD camera. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, good quality 4K signals, the best that I've seen are the Blackmagic 4K cameras. Um, I'm sure the reds and, you know, the the really expensive Sony FS7s and stuff are probably amazing quality as well. But if you're comparing a $2,000 4K camera with a $2,000 HD camera, the HD camera tends to be better quality for HD stuff um, at the moment. So there's something to keep in mind. Okay, well, um, thank you so much for being a part of this show, Martin. I know you're extremely busy, so I don't want to take up much more of your time. Um, one of the things that I am interested in, though, in the future is that Martin Gilbert from Siena NDI is opening up his NDI cloud coming soon. And um, 
we're going to have him on the show, I think, in February. But I maybe we could I, I could have you guys on somehow. Of course, you're going to be in Australia. So anyway, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be using vMix with NDI Cloud. We have a TriCaster here. So it's going to be – I think that's going to be really interesting for a lot of people. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you go because um, it, we, we, this has been a fun, a really fun show. Thank you so much for everyone who, who tuned in. I don't think we can continue to ask, keep taking questions because we're both really busy. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Martin. Yeah, thanks, Paul. It's great being here. And uh, thanks, guys, in the chat room. Had a lot of very interesting questions. Well, that's it, everybody. Take care. Have a good weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. We won't be on next week. I finally got – there was no audio dropouts this week, so at least I got that. But I think I had the Behringer up just a little too high today. But every, t every time it's just a little bit better each time. Take care, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Martin. See you guys. Bye. Ah, this one. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Thanks so much, Martin. That was fun. No worries. Thanks. Uh. Well, if you guys ever need anything from me, just let me know. Um, I've been having a lot of fun. Well, now you got the X keys. That's...